And he was censured for not paying Uncle Sam before. But that's not stopping Congressman Charlie Rangel from offering tax advice for this year. Willis watchdogs bark about it. We're on the case next on The Willis Report. He was once the head of the powerful tax writing committee in Congress. Then he didn't pay his taxes. Now Congressman Charlie Rangel is offering his constituents tax tips. I can't make this up. The Willis Watchdogs bark about it next. Walmart benefiting from strong sales overseas, but U.S. sales in the tank fell for the seventh quarter in a row and came in worse than Walmart's own projections. Now it has been a full year. The megastore has lost shoppers to dollar stores and other rivals. Time to let the Willis watchdogs out. Rodney Anderson is a financial expert in Dallas. Emily Miller is the senior editor for humanevents.com. And Andy Levy is the ombudsman for Red Eye on the Fox News Channel. Rodney, let's start with you. What do you make of Walmart? Is it over? Is, is, are they, should they just stick a fork in it? Well, here's what's happening, Jerry. People are either shifting up to Nordstrom's or they're shifting down to Dollar General. But here's what's going to happen. Watch Walmart. It's going to be a good buy as gas prices continue to move higher. All the people that moved up to Nordstrom's are now going to move back to Walmart. You know, Walmart I think gets... the gas prices, the gas prices are going to be an issue that for Walmart, people aren't driving out to yeah. Walmarts because gas is so expensive. So if gas prices do go up, it's really hurting Walmart. And now we're seeing with Libya and what's going on in the Middle East right now, gas prices go up to $4 a gallon by April. People aren't going to be driving out to Walmart. Andy? Yeah, I agree with Emily. I think part of the problem is, you know, you've got a lot of a lot of groups on the left keeping trying to keep Walmart out of communities, which means they're further away from a lot of the people who might want to use them and those people can't get there. But I don't understand why these liberal groups don't have any problems with dollar stores and stuff like that coming in. Also apparently taking business from mom and pop stores, but they don't they seem okay with that. They also sort of switched up their strategy and right. lost their low uh, price uh, guarantee. And that was a real problem, particularly for people suffering from high gas prices. Let's go into another story the New York Daily News is reporting. Recently censured Congressman Charlie Rangel sending out his Rangel report is offering, get this, tax tips for his constituents. Rangel was punished by the House in December for, guess what, failing to pay taxes on his Dominican villa. Emily? Well, I, um, I had the, uh, I have to say, pleasure of covering the, the Rangel trial when it was here in the House in Washington. And he has never shown any remorse or repentance. He was censured. He was the first congressman in, I think, 30, little, almost 30 years to get censured by the full House. And the reason he was censured was for not paying taxes. He has this really fancy villa in the Dominican Republic. And um, he's renting it out for 17 years, not paying the taxes on it. And he was a chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, which writes tax laws. So it really shouldn't be anyone's surprise that the man's now giving out tax advice. Well, he Rodney, <laughs> i got to tell you, I'm surprised. And I'm not very happy either. Come on. You got into trouble for not paying your taxes. Now you're trying to tell me how to do it. you got to be kidding. <laughs> you know what? It's the double standard we continue to see. We still haven't wiped out all the, all the people in Congress that need to go away. Charlie Rangel just needs to retire. Then he can go give all the tax advice that he wants. <laughs> And, and uh, we can and call Charlie it Rangel, today. No, I, I just, I just say, announced I, he's running. I, I couldn't disagree more, Jerry. I, I actually I looked at the advice he's offering. It's actually really good. He says it was helpful. No, he says be on the <laughs> committee is. that writes the tax laws. Uh, he says invest your money in overseas properties and set aside two million dollars for future legal fees. It's all it's all really good advice. What's wrong all right, with that? All right. He didn't say that. No, no, but, no, but he actually, if you read his tax, all right. if you read all right, his let's advice, go on to the next helpful. story. A new report shows that only about half of Americans are married. That's 10 percent than back in 2000 and the lowest point in about 100 years. Instead, nearly a million more Americans are cohabitating than 2009. And Andy, we're going to give you the first answer to this because because you're not married. Are no, you? I, okay. could, I could so not you be know a lot about qualified that. <laughs> to talk about this story. But look, you, you've got a generation of people who in large part were raised by divorced parents. So they, I don't think it's a huge shock that they're not in any rush to go out and get married. It's a lot easier to buy an iPad and sit at home and play games all night. Well, Emily, isn't the conventional wisdom that you need to get your life kind of settled, get your, your career on track and then you get married and by that time you're like 75 or something? Right. That's why I'm still not married. <laughs> that's All right. Right. Like settle. Unless Andy's going to jump in here. It looks like I've still got some blind dates coming my way. Um, but I, I mean, yes, marriage rates are falling, but so is divorce rates are up. And but actually there was good news out of the same report is that marriages are stronger in the recession and the divorces have gone down. So people are kind of, you know, I think they're stronger the because nobody can afford to move out, which is part of it. But also I think it's 
bonding. Bonding. Hey, mom and dad. Mom and dad used to borrow money from home equity loans to, in order to pay for weddings. Now they can't. Kids used to go finance wedding rings, finance wedding dresses. Now they can't. And this is the exact reason why the economy's not coming back. It's because people don't have access to credit. Oh, or, I thought you were going to say there, there weren't as many weddings. I, I think like, that there's don't. a culture there. All right, or, or Emily, there, go ahead. There, are, Last well, word, Emily. Say, I mean, on a serious that there is sort of a cultural issue of people living together before marriage, which has risen enormously while marriage has gone down. All right. And so I think that's what, what, what this is reflecting more than anything else. All right, Rodney, Emily and Andy, marriage. thanks, guys. Great job. Always terrific to have you here. Thank you.